Hey guys, Rainer and Chaser, Exercise My First Amendment Rights Vlog Style here with my seventh Q&A video. Now before I begin, I will say if I don't answer your question, please do not take it personal. If I don't answer a specific question, it's either because I have answered it before somewhere, probably maybe in a video of mine somewhere, or because I don't feel strongly about it, or just because I'm trying to get this video to be shorter and be a bit more selective. So, with that in mind, let's get started here. Silent Wolf X84 asks, What do you think are some of the best new metal bands that came out between 2005 and 2015, outside of your top 20 modern metal bands? I'll sort of use this as sort of a way to sort of go off from that video and basically talk, list some bands that Either I didn't include in that video, either because I didn't have room, or because I wasn't listening to very much of their stuff at the time, or because I hadn't heard of them at the time. That would probably include bands along the lines of Nothing More, Aeon Zen, Bullet For My Valentine, Parkway Drive is also a really good band, Animals As Leaders of course is awesome, Havoc if you want to go to thrash metal, and that's all that's really coming to mind. Of course there's going to be a shit ton more, but you get the idea. Sheldon Champagne asks, Who is your favorite of the big four of thrash metal? Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, or Megadeth? My favorite for the longest time has always been Megadeth, mainly because I've listened to them the longest, and because Rust in Peace is among one of my favorite albums of all time. After them, it goes Metallica, then Anthrax, then Slayer. The Wolf Eclipse 696 asks, who is your favorite power metal band? That would be Stradivarius. 2. Do you prefer girls with brown hair, black hair, or blonde hair? Neither. I really like redheads, but if I had to pick one of those, I would go with brown hair. 3. If you could choose to be a metal elitist or a serial killer, which would you choose? Probably an elitist because you can't go to jail for being an elitist. Marie Sinical asks, what's your opinion on symphonic metal? I like it, but it's not really something I dabble in all too much. The few bands that I really like from Symphonic Metal would be Nightwish, of course, uh, Rhapsody of Fire, Epica, Within Temptation, and a uh, few others, but mainly them. Deathbat6916 asks, are you for or against the death penalty? It really depends on the crime, honestly. Like, if it was really, really heinous, like if you committed genocide, or if you committed a mass murder, and especially if a lot of children were involved, then I would say the death penalty would be more or less warranted there. Two, where do you stand on gun control? Me and Official GATG generally pretty much have the same opinions as far as gun control goes in that guns don't kill people, people do. And the kinds of people that do are, you know, nine times out of 10 mentally deranged. And it's because they have, you know, access to guns. And it's because of that, I think there should be a screening if you're going to buy a gun. Because, you know, the most logical reason I've always believed to own a gun is for self-defense, but you know, anybody could go in and say it's for self-defense purposes and go hunt a motherfucker down. But there should be a screening for something like this, so you can basically pass the screening and then you can own the gun for self-defense purposes, of course. Um, or if, you know, you are working a job where part of your job description is the to be able to use a gun. Really just, you know, banning guns is not going to solve anything. And there are two reasons for that. One is you're going to create a black market, which is going to put more people in jail, which, you know, good job. And two, there are more weapons out there than just guns. There's also knives, there's also baseball bats, grenades, chainsaws, nail guns, you name it. Or really, just about anything can be used as a weapon. Like, I could make a weapon out of this bottle of Mountain Dew and kill somebody with that somehow, but guns aren't the only weapon that mentally deranged people have access to. But since guns are mainly the main focus, that's where I think the screening should definitely be set in place. I'm not exactly pro-gun, but I just think banning guns is just irrational. 3. Have you heard of the band Course of Nature? Can't really say I have. 4. 
who do you think won the Democratic debate if you watched it? I only watched a little bit of it, but you know, I barely really needed to to know that Bernie fucking slaughtered. Five. Pro-life or pro-choice? Pro-choice. Six. Opinion on Myers-Briggs personality tests. I think I've taken that, or maybe some IQ or aptitude test, and you know, generally I think a lot of those tests tell you generally shit that you already know about yourself, but you know, if you want to take them just for fun, then you know, by all means. Zane Smith asks, do you think thrash metal is still alive, and who do you think are some good new school thrash bands? Well, the way I've always looked at this is no genre of music dies. You know, as long as it's still being made, it's still being produced, it's still being bought, it's still being listened to, people are still playing it live, then it's just as much alive as it ever was. That's why, you know, I don't think anything really dies. Not thrash metal, not glam metal, nothing. You know, even classical music, you know, it's still being performed, it's still being utilized, it's still being used, so classical music I don't think has died either. Now as far as new school thrash bands, um, Havoc, like I said before, they're amazing. I've always thought they were really good. Municipal Waste, uh, they've always been one of my favorites in the new school thrash scene. I've also really liked bands like Evile, Warbringer, uh, Hemlock, Lich King I actually really like as well. Gamma Bomb is also a really good one. Battlecross, Lazarus AD, and quite a good bit more. Alex Schmidt asks, what was your first musical memory? This would probably be when I was like a really little kid, like before my parents moved into our current house, when I was really, 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 really fucking little. Um, and they liked to make these mixtapes for me. Not, you know, mixtapes, but mixtapes. Uh, they like to make mixtapes for me with a bunch of Disney songs and songs from Sesame Street and Barney and all that good shit. And uh, this tape was called Michael's Music Mix. And they would like to play it for me. And the thing I remember more so than the actual content itself was how they would always be flipping through the radio stations trying to find Michael's Music Mix. And even at that age, I knew, like, dude, you're not gonna find this on the fucking radio. You're fucking idiots. All you have to do is press fucking play. What are you going through the radio for? Kyle Atkinson asks, what are your thoughts on TSOL becoming a glam metal band on the album Hit and Run? Weirdly enough, I think it was because of this, you know, back when I was a total fucking noob at researching bands, I was searching, you know, on Wikipedia for their list of glam metal bands and found that TSOL was listed on there. And back when I actually didn't know how to do as legitimate of research looking into bands, uh, I ended up finding, you know, their earlier stuff, and I don't even think I've even actually listened to the album Hit and Run, but I will say, you know, TSOL, they are a very fine uh, early 80s punk band. He also asks for my thoughts on the bands Black and Blue and Kicks. First of all, you misspelled Black and Blue. It's Black and Blue, not Black and Blue. Now, what do I think of them? They are a very good, underrated band. They got a pretty good push back in the day. You know what, with Gene Simmons producing for them, the fact that uh, their guitarist, Tommy Thayer, ended up becoming Kiss's current guitarist. If you haven't heard of Black and Blue, do yourself a favor. They put out four really good albums back in the 80s. They're really good lessons. And as for Kicks, they're pretty much the straight up personification of the early 80s really raunchy, sleazy, glam sound. But the albums I really like of Kicks are Midnight Dynamite, Blow My Fuse, and Hotwire. But mainly Blow My Fuse. That's a very well done album. The writing was actually really good on that album. Uh, some really good parts on there. And they're just... Overall, they just sound like a really fun band. Steven Santanas asks, Favorite new wave of British heavy metal band? That would be a tie between Judas Priest and Def Leppard. He also asks, David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar? Well, I never really liked the Van Hagar era. I've always preferred the Roth albums 
over the Hagar albums, and I always thought Roth had a much better solo career than Sammy Hagar, so Roth. Alex Swift asks, you said you quit a Metalgate group. What is your most recent view on Metalgate and feminism? Well, they haven't really changed at all. I mean, the reason I left that Facebook group, it wasn't because I disagreed with with it. It was just because there were some people in there that I thought were contradicting what I thought the group stood for. And I think I said in one of my videos, I believe it was the video about Bieber wearing the Metallica shirt, where I go off on a slightly relevant tangent about why I left the group, and I'll play the clip right now. This actually relates to one of the reasons as to why I left the Metalgate group on Facebook a few months ago. Aside from finding out that there were a few people in that group that admitted to being pro-discrimination and thus completely contradicting the core principles I thought Metalgate stood for, when I was linking a video of mine that was relevant to a particular discussion going on at the time, one particular individual refused to watch it because A, it was a long video, which heaven forbid I have a good bit to say that I can't condense into a video in under five minutes, and B, because I was wearing my Alter Bridge shirt. Yep. Your opinion is apparently invalid if you're wearing a certain shirt. That's fucking retarded! Also in the description of that video, I link a Facebook post that I made on my fan page, basically going into more detail about why I left the group. Again, it wasn't because I disagreed with it, it, it was just because I didn't really like a lot of the people in the group. Do you acknowledge that some music can be sexist, racist, etc.? Why would I be listening to Steel Panther if I didn't acknowledge that? Do you like or agree with any protest bands? If Rage Against the Machine counts as a protest band, then yeah, I really like them. As far as their message goes, I would probably have to go into greater detail probably in a separate video about that, or if I were to make a What's Wrong With about Rage Against the Machine, that's where I would probably go into more detail about that, but if Rage Against the Machine counts, then then I like them. All Out War 5001 asks, favorite ACDC album? That would either be For Those About to Rock or The Razor's Edge. Two, how do you rank the first six Van Halen albums, worst to best? My least favorite out of the first six would probably be Van Halen 2, then followed by Women and Children First, then followed by the first album, then followed by Fair Warning, then followed by Diver Down, and then followed by 1984. Three, what do you think of the new Megadeth song Fatal Illusion, which you misspelled illusion? I haven't had a whole lot of time to check that out because I've just been busy listening to a bunch of different things that have been flying under my radar. But generally what I do is I wait for the album to drop so everything is really fresh. So I am looking forward to hearing Megadeth's new album, so be on the lookout. Four, favorite Anthrax album. That would be Among the Living. Five, thoughts on the Black Sabbath album Born Again. I actually do like that album. There are some really cool songs on it, such as Disturbing the Priest and Trashed. And it's also interesting to note that it's the only album, actually, that they do with Ian Gillen of Deep Purple on vocals. It's really interesting to hear him there. And overall, I think Born Again is a pretty good album. It's actually the last album of Black Sabbaths that I tend to listen to. I don't really listen to too much that came after that. For me, it's really just the Ozzy era, the Dio era, and the Ian Gillen era, if you can really call this an era, because it was just for one album. Kendall Krebs asks, Thoughts on Pearl Jam? They're an alright band. They have some decent musicians. I mean, Mike McCready's a pretty good uh, guitarist. Matt Cameron, pretty good drummer. Stone Gossard and Jeff Ament, they're all right. Eddie Vedder's vocals, they're decent. They're not exactly my favorite, but he's all right at what he does. Generally, when it comes to grunge music, I don't care for Pearl Jam that much. I've always been more of an Alice in Chains guy. Um, but on the whole, you know, Pearl Jam, they're decent. And finally, Cooper Sly King asks, how long have you played your instruments? I've played guitar since 2006, so it's gonna be nine coming up on 10 years. Drums I've played since 2004, so that would be 11 coming up on 12. And bass I've played since 2008, so that would be seven coming up on eight. Two. Is mayonnaise an instrument? I don't know, Cooper. Is it?
So thank you to everyone who asked questions, and thank you for watching this video. Take care and have a nice day. I'm Shades, and I'll see you next time.